All right, welcome to the third challenge of Dan Vulnerable DeFi. Uh, starting to get a little bit interesting here. So we have more and more lending pools are offering flash loans. In this case, a new pool has launched that is offering flash loans of Dem valuable tokens for free. Currently, the pool has 1 million DVT tokens in balance and you have nothing. But don't worry, you may be able to take them all from the pool in a single transaction. So let's go ahead and take a look at this lender pool. So uh, it's again, damn valuable token as an ERC-20 and it, that is constructed in the constructor. So this is the important bit here. We have the flash loan, which has the uh, takes arguments of borrow amount, the borrower, the target and the data. So this is interesting. There's quite a, quite a few arguments here. So let's take a look what what it does. So first it calculates the balance before. So, if it, uh, you know, make sure that it has enough tokens in the pool to provide the amount of the flash loan. It then transfers to the borrower. So again, we can uh, specify who that is, uh, the borrow amount of how much we want to borrow. And then it does this really interesting thing here called target dot function call data. So function call again is using the open Zeppelin library with the custom address library. And it is using target, which is defined by us, which is just an arbitrary address. And it calls that contract with data. Now you may think, what do you mean call that? What, what's data in this case? So we can actually pass what's called the ABI or application binary interface to define what we want to call and what we want to call it with. And so I'll go into this when, when we uh, are coding up the exploit, but essentially that we can call any function of any contract with any variables. And this should be already be uh, raising the red flags of, of how we can exploit this. Um, but yeah, we'll get into that in a little bit. Then afterwards, once we call it, um, it um, checks the balance afterwards and verifies if the flash line has been paid back or not. Um, and so I must say, like, this is a naive implementation of how you could do a flash loan. Usually you'd want this, so then you can go, yep, all right, call this smart contract with this uh, specific function and these address and these values. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> not the best here. So let's go ahead and see how we can exploit this. So... Uh, first of all, uh, let's run through the before setup. So it just deploys the two tokens and then it deploys the uh, uh, the lender pool and then it transfers to the lender pool the tokens in the pool, which is a million. And then it just verifies that the setup is correct or not. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to use this little testing framework on the side. Uh, I think we've done... We did naive receiver, so we can hit that one. But let's go ahead and do truster, and this should fail. We can see that it expected zero to be equal to one million, which it's not. So how do we exploit this? So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, kind of set everything up. So I know this looks quite uh, like a lot. Actually, no, sorry. The first thing that we're going to do is create our attacking contract. And the reason we're going to create an attacking contract is so we can do this all in one transaction as the, uh, the challenge has suggested. So let's go ahead and create a new file. We're going to call this attack truster.sol. And I'm going to copy in the contract here. So What's going on here? Let's go ahead and start with uh, the initial bit, which is we construct a new contract and we pass in the address of the trusty lender pool and the token as well, so the damn valuable token. So that's pretty straightforward. It's just you know setting up the contract to, to interact with these two. And then we have this awesome function called attack here. And so the way that attack works is it's going to pass in the amount, borrower, target, and, and data, which you will see is the exact same parameters here. And we're going to just call the flash loan with these parameters. Now, the reason that I'm passing it to the smart contract is I'll show you uh, once we get to the end here. Uh, and then we have a transfer from. So this is kind of a little cheeky way of how we can, um, how we're going to exploit this here now. Hello, motorbike. Okay, so then after that, uh, how do we actually exploit this? So the, the way that we can do this is that, again, coming back to the contract, we can call any address with any function with any data. So to steal all the tokens in the pool, all we need to do is call the function to approve our smart contract address 
to spend the tokens of the pool. Now, if you don't know what ESC20 is or all the functions of it, I'd recommend you look into that. But essentially, we can approve uh, within the ESC20 uh, standard, we can approve another address to spend our tokens on our behalf. So let's go ahead and uh, show how that works. So this is kind of our function that we use to do this. Now let's use our exploit code. So uh, first of all, we're going to uh, deploy our contract. So we get our deployer, uh, which is going to get the factory. And uh, this is the title of the contract and we're going to deploy it and we're going to deploy it with this dot pool address and this dot token address which are those two parameters required for the constructor up here so then after that uh, we're going to set a few variables so this is going to be the amount we're going to borrow we don't need to borrow anything so we can just borrow zero um, if we go to attack uh, the lending pool, it doesn't actually require that the balance be greater than zero. We don't need to borrow anything, so we may as well not borrow anything. Um, the borrower becomes the attacker, and the target becomes the uh, this dot token address. So the target is the address that we want to interact with. So the next thing is creating that ABI, as I was speaking about before. So the ABI, again, is like a succinct way or a binary way to interact or how smart contracts read um, or how to select the function to run and, and with what parameters. So the ABI of the function that we want to call is function approve address of spender and uh, the uint 256 of amount. Now, this actually isn't correct. This should really be, we should get rid of this. We should get rid of the parameter names and get rid of all the spaces. However, uh, ethers.js kind of handled this us handles all of this for us. Um, so what you can do to get this string is we can jump to the lender pool and we can have a look at the ERC20 uh, where is it? ERC20, ERC20 uh, approved, yeah. So we can just literally copy this and that is what we paste in our exploit here. Okay, cool. So once we have that ABI, we then want to create a new interface. So we're using the ethers.utils interface um, function here, and it creates a new one given the, the ABI. Uh, important that this is in brackets because you can provide multiple functions within the one interface. Then we want to provide the data that we want to call. So this is going to encode the function data. Uh, within this interface here. And so the first argument here is the function that we want to call. So the actual string name of that function called approve. Um, so this is a way if you have multiple up here, you know which function it wants to select. And then in here, the next argument is just the array of arguments that you want to pass to this um, this function here. So we have the address of the spender, which is going to be the attacking contract. We want the contract to be able to spend the tokens. And then we want the tokens in the pool. So we want to approve all the tokens in the pool, which is about a million. And the final thing I'll say here as well, the reason we're putting the attack contract and not the attacker is because in uh, our attack truster contract, we want to do this all in one transaction, right? So once we get the flash loan complete, um, we don't need to have a callback or anything. We don't actually want to borrow anything here. So when it does the check of being like, is it greater than or equal to what it was before? It's going to go, yeah, because we didn't borrow anything. It didn't transfer anything. Um, but then once that's complete, the next thing that we want to do is transfer from the address of the lending pool to the message.sender, which is going to be the attacker. And it's going to be all the, uh, all the ETH that there is, or all the tokens, but this is in the ether. Um, amount here. So yeah, so once it's approved, then this smart contract is going to be the one that's actually executing the transfer. So let's go ahead and then we call the attacking contract with the amount, the borrower, the target, and the data. And once that's done, it'll transfer it to the attacker and that should be it. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. We're going to use our trusty tester here. So we can go ahead and hit run. And it failed. Artifact, oh, so because our contract hasn't been compiled yet, we're just going to do it through um, through the command line here using yarn run, which compiles all your contracts before running it. And you can see that it's passing there. So if we run this again, we get the green tick. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned a little bit. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next one.